I'm Lee Brown. It's October 24th, and this is your Western North Carolina update from what I know by traveling in and out of the mountain area and my teams that are traveling in and out as well to serve our neighbors. The first thing I want y'all to understand, and if you're not from around here, you might not know, the area that was impacted by Hurricane Helene is a very broad geographic area. When I say broad, I mean it's big by miles, but it's also so different because you have the city of Asheville, which has its power back mostly, the water zone, even though it's not potable yet, and your businesses are reopening. You have Boone, where Appalachian State is, and they are running pretty decent right now. You have other towns that are ready for their fall leaf visitors, and they are asking for you to come spend your tourist dollars there. Then we also have Yancey County, Mitchell County, Madison County, Avery County that may not have power back for some several months, as in six, nine, or 12 months. The water is still impacted, and so they don't even have basic first world things that we're so used to having. Clean water, toilets that flush, power. I mean, it's just not back at all. And so you have areas that are way behind the curve and areas that are doing okay. And that should explain to you why you see different perspectives on the social networks. Now, I also want you to understand something else. As you look at these different areas and you hear of towns that are asking for tourists, I'm going to beg of you to be a thoughtful tourist and don't put a burden on the infrastructure. And please don't gawk at the neighbors that are in tent cities in some of our towns because they don't want to be in tent cities and they don't want you making a social post out of them without you talking to them and getting their permission first. So don't be gross and don't be a grifter. And I could name some names, but I'm withholding at the moment because there is one in specific who is making a lot of money off of my neighbors and really just wants to be a social media star and not do anything in return. And yes, I have receipts. So anyway, the other thing I want you to know about those tent cities, these are primarily runners, y'all. So if you're the person on the interwebs that comments, just get your insurance money. Mm. Most renters don't carry renter's insurance for one. And also they don't own the property, so they don't have property insurance. Most of them had credit cards that were maxed out. Thank you, inflation. And many of them have lost their cars too because these floods wiped out cars. And we have not seen a great movement of used cars going to the mountains. I'm working with a friend on some ideas, but since 2009, that terrible cash for clunkers program destroyed our used car market. We're starting from scratch in a lot of ways. And so I just want you to consider that when you talk about tent cities and you think about who's in there, these are not losers and drifters. These are your neighbors. These are North Carolinians who have had everything swept out from under them. And it should be on all of us to remember that they have dignity as children of God and they were absolutely created for a purpose. And how do we care for our neighbors like the local churches have been doing so well? So when I talk about that human dignity, I will tell you, we're going to do a housing blitz of some structures that can get folks out of tents and out of tarps. I had hoped to have the details out. We're not quite ready yet, and I want to make sure we roll out your volunteer opportunities with everything else. The Amazon wish list is updated on my site, and we can take your monetary donations to go toward the building project, which is going to happen in the next couple of weeks because winter is upon us, y'all. And so I got to mention one more thing. You're seeing a lot of talk about the official death count and what the real numbers are. The first thing I want you to understand is this. We're probably never going to know the official death toll, and that is not a reflection on any agency of sorts. It's because the volume of this landslide, y'all, we have some of our North Carolinians that were buried under a wall of mud, and we will not see them again on this side of heaven, and we'll see them in the eternity, and I'm very grateful for the Lord, but you got to know. You're never going to know the number, and that's not a conspiracy. It is the size of this storm. Please get your mind around that. And I also want you to know where we had large homeless encampments like the Tunnel Road in Asheville. We will never know how many people were camped there unless their families reach out and ask for help. There's really no good resource to count. They're not counting those right now. And we've, we've got to figure something out. I just don't think it's humane to allow all these homeless encampments where people have mental illness and drug abuse issues, and we're just letting it happen. I just don't think that's the right way to treat our neighbors. And so when you look at this death count, I also want you to know a little fact. Then In North Carolina, you can't count a death as an official count until the coroner has signed off on it. In North Carolina, we used to have county coroners, but now we have a state medical examiner's office. 
there are three coroners left in the state, and one of them's in Avery County. So that coroner's office has been managing the bulk of this. So you should stop right now and pray for that coroner and for that office because nobody wants to have to go through this kind of a tragedy looking at death right in the face over and over and over. And that's going to be a trauma that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. So pray for the coroner and the coroner's office. But that should also tell you why our numbers are fairly low. They can't go but so fast. And then when you think about the bodies that have been recovered and why we have not identified them yet, Okay, friends, remember the, the facts of living in a human shell that is perishable. It was warm when the storm hit, and so not everybody is in perfect condition when it's located. The same people have been in floodwaters, and so there were other issues that are restricting identification. And not everybody has dental records because we had high poverty rates in many of the mountain areas. And if you are in a poverty situation, you're not spending your money on the dentist. And the folks that did have money may have an inherent distrust of the medical and dental system. And who can blame them? So there's not dental records and they're hard to identify. And the coroner is outnumbered. And I don't know if the state medical examiner's office has been here helping or not. I have no knowledge of that one way or the other. I'm just telling you how we're set up is a deck that's stacked against the numbers being updated accurately, speedily. It's not because there's a real conspiracy to hide the deaths. I think it's just the logistics of managing it in a society that doesn't really want to talk about death because we have forgotten that this life is not all there is, y'all. So if you want to help, please check out my link. We have an updated wish list so we can get our build blitz going. We are taking your monetary donations, and I can show receipts about how I'm spending it. And most importantly, and I will keep saying this until the breath is taken from me, please pray. My neighbors are in dire straits, and they need your prayers as the trauma is going on. We are going to be trying our best to stop the suicide bug from catching hold because our neighbors need to know that they have a purpose and they have hope. And you can be a part of that by being a prayer warrior where you are. So share this video with somebody, and if you have questions, let me know. In the meantime, I'll share more details on the Build Blitz as we get it ready to roll.